Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can start. Welcome to the fourth session. Uh, today we will discuss B value power and statistical uh, tests, how to choose uh, them. Actually, we will divide the lecture into two uh, calls. In the first one, we will revise the hypotheses. Um, uh, how, how to think logically about statistical tests and B value. And in the second call, we will discuss power, sample size, and uh, the different statistical tests, but not in details, just an overlook uh, around them. And we can do another call just for the questions. I hope we can stick to the time today. And uh, I really like to remind you uh, of the attendance sheet. So if you can fill it yourself, that would be of much help to me. So. Uh, is everybody ready? Are you hearing me well? Huh? Perfect. Uh, you can always use the song uh, as a reaction, as a quick reaction. Okay, for the revision, uh, we should remember this table is the most important table for categorical data, the two by two table. We have disease negative or positive, and we have the factor, any other factor. Um, those should be two different variables. I can say that we have the disease here and the disease here, okay? Or another disease, that might be the case, the association between those two diseases, but uh, those two variables should be different. And we should say that it's not always positive and negative, we might have unclear, we might have four categories or uh, whatever it is, but they are all dealt with in the same way. Uh, we should also remember this uh, figure. This figure is the distribution for uh, continuous data. If you remember, we started last time Okay. Uh, we started last time with this line and we said when we add more uh, data, we can't use just one line. So that's why we added that uh, other axis and we put the frequencies here. So remember that when I say two for the uh, blue distribution, it's less frequent than zero and so on. What is the differences between th those two uh, distributions? Actually, we have the different mean because the center of these distributions are the mean, okay? When we are talking about uh, semi-normal uh, distributions. Of course, if they are skewed, we will talk about that later. But uh, we have different means, here the mean appears to be 2 and here the mean appears to be 0 and the standard deviation. Why the standard deviation? Because it's uh, the variance actually. The standard deviation, the confidence interval, whatever it is, whatever the uh, number that represents that, but it is different. The variance between this and this is different. This uh, distribution is really tight and this one is more flat. Okay normal distribution and polynormal distribution. What is the point of using a normal distribution? Actually, to make continuous data easier for us to deal with, okay? In, with normal distribution, they are all the same uh, shape and we can deal with them, we can compare them in an easier way. And uh, you will see that for normal distribution data, uh, the, the uh, analytical, the statistical tests will be different from those that are not normal. Okay, what can we see here? We can see the median, the mean, and the mode. If you remember for normal distribution, they are all in the center, okay? This point is in the middle uh, of this range 
and this is the median. Uh, it is the mean because if we combine them all and divide them on their number, it will be that point too. And it is a mode because mode is always on the top. Mode is always on the top. But why median went there? Because we have more data to the left. And mean went there because we have that outlier here that took the mean away. Okay, so we don't usually use those. And when we have them, we change them to be normal. Okay, we might talk about that later at the end of this uh, workshop. What is the other point in a normal distribution? It's the standard deviation. It's not the standard deviation in itself, it's the variance actually. Uh, we need to control the variance because for normal distributions, we need to say that this uh, distribution is symmetrical and it's not that it's not more flat or it's not more tight so we need to control that and to control that we say that there are several rules last session but we don't need to care about them because there are tests for normality so we put our data we tell spss or excel or whatever the program is is this data normal and the program says that it is normal it's a little bit not normal and so on. Okay, that brings us to the confidence interval. What is the confidence interval? It's the distance between two standard deviation above the mean and two standard deviation below the mean. Okay, and what does the two standard deviation mean? That means that this range contains 95%. Okay, so we are here defining the 95% confidence interval. We can say just confidence interval and define it. We should put that number before it. We have other options. We have uh, the 99 confidence interval and so on. And what does that mean more than this? We have those outliers and those outliers in our case are 2.5% to the right and 2.5% uh, uh, to the left. Okay, what, what does the confidence interval mean to us, like logically or uh, theoretically? If I repeat that test 100 times, I will just have five of these times out of the confidence interval and 95 of these uh, attempts inside the confidence interval. Do, do you agree on that or do you feel that this is a, a conclusion that shouldn't be? Okay. To understand more about confidence interval, do you think that we need confidence interval to be higher or wider or narrower? What, what do you think is the best for us in the statistics? Wider. Wider? Yes, wider. Okay, uh, let, let, let's discuss uh, that. Somebody came to us and said that um, these answers will cost me. Okay, uh, these apples will cost me. 10,000 uh, US dollars. This person came to me and told me that it's either 100 dollars lower or 100 dollars higher. This person said that it's 3,000 dollars lower or 3,000 dollars higher. Okay, what is the difference between those two confidence intervals? Here we do not have one, but here between those two. Actually, it's better to have a tighter one. This narrow one will give us a better estimation. Okay, um, uh, I will understand the number more. I will understand that the variance is very low here. Okay, but here, and he just gave me like a six thousand dollar range. So this is a big range. This number is twice. Uh, as expensive as this number. So this number is not so useful to me, okay? But this number is quite useful, let's say. But we need to consider that 
we need that confidence interval to be the same as uh, that confidence interval in, in order to be able to compare them. If they are both 95% confidence interval, then we are correct. And this person is giving me more exact information and he is less, um, he has a lot of precision, okay? But if you remember precision, like getting the same number every time, this person lacks uh, precision. He has a lot of random error. Okay. We have a number. Yeah. If there is any question, please just interrupt me and I will be happy to answer. Um, if we have a number, uh, this number falls inside the confidence interval of uh, the non hypothesis of somebody. So we can't drop any conclusion out of that. But when we have that number out of the confidence interval of somebody else, we can drop a conclusion out of that, right? Can you repeat, please, for connection? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we have any number and we have a confidence interval, they are on the same scale. I have a confidence interval and a number, okay? When I compare the number to the confidence interval, it's either inside or outside, either in this way or in the other way around. So, if this inside, I can't drop any conclusion because this person might be, or it's high, uh, it's most likely to be one of this population, the population of the confidence interval. But when that person is outside the confidence interval, okay, I can say that this person is less likely to be uh, a member of like that population. Others. Okay. I, I hope this is clear. Okay. Is it always good to be out of the confidence interval? Okay. Sometimes we need to be normal. We need to be in the confidence interval. Like in here, we shouldn't be like higher or lower in, uh, or more than two standard deviations up or down uh, the, the um, range of the confidence interval. But Sometimes we need to be. So, uh, for example, here, the, uh, this chicken just uh, sent a letter saying that you are three standard deviation above normal. This is a compliment because he's saying that this chicken is really a beautiful, okay? So sometimes that person should be better, okay? But not always, as we said, okay? Excuse me, Ibrahim, but can you resend the link to the WhatsApp group, please? Yeah. Someone is asking for it. Sorry. No worries. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a please, Zara, tell me if uh, they are still stuck out of the conversation. Uh, are they more than three? So we can wait, maybe? I guess one. One? It's okay. I hope he will join us or she will join us soon. Okay, so sometimes we need to be out of the standard deviation, uh, not the standard deviation or uh, the confidence interval and when I'm using those uh, two terms uh, instead of each other it's actually the same okay so and sometimes we need to be uh, normal now to the uh, null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis okay uh, those hypotheses are called hypotheses because they are not normal okay uh, in order to understand the null hypothesis, we need to understand that um, the null hypothesis shouldn't be something that I aim for. It should be something that is normal, that is accepted by everybody. 
okay? Or at least um, uh, most of the humans. Um, uh, actually, the burden or uh, the effort that should be done by those who want to uh, change that, they should be uh, the one who, uh, who are doing the effort to prove the alternative hypothesis. But we shouldn't do any effort to prove the null hypothesis, okay? I can, can anybody just repeat the, that example in his or her understanding? Um, I can, but first we have a question about the chicken example, if you can repeat it. Actually, it's not an example, it's a joke. Yeah, uh, this male chicken is saying to the female chicken that you are more than three standard deviation above the norm. Okay, so he's saying that we have a normal distribution of beauty and uh, this um, female chicken is a three standard deviation above the mean. Okay, so she is like, uh, and the probability of her beauty is less, is, is less, is, is less than one percent. Okay, well, we will go to the standard, uh, to, to the normal distribution again, and you can see uh, the standard distribution, the normal distribution is divided into first, second, and third standard deviation. And in the third standard deviation, we have 99% of the participants inside. So if she is more, then she, uh, her beauty is um, less than 1% probable, okay? Yeah. Yeah, please, Zara, can you, can you just uh, explain to us what you understood from this ex example? Yeah, sure. So he's asking her to marry him. She has to put a hypothesis to accept or reject. So her null hypothesis is that he is uh, like everyone else. Okay. So if he is like everyone else, so if uh, he is like everyone else, uh, she can't reject the null hypothesis, and she. Uh, she will accept the null hypothesis, which is yeah, rejecting him. Yeah, the null but hypothesis if, means no change. Exactly, but if he is different, then she can reject the null hypothesis, and she will accept his offer. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly, exactly. Can, can somebody else just tell us about this? This is a different answer from a different perspective. If anybody can contribute, that would be really welcome. Just the opposite of what she has said. Yeah, but uh, this is the other way around. This is the other option. She, she said rejection? No, this is not real rejection. She accepted him. Uh -huh, okay, so but we shouldn't confuse ourselves. Actually, sometimes this rejection means yes, and this I'm not able to reject means no. Okay, so uh, we should understand that we are talking about the null hypothesis, which is nothing. Okay, so it's all the other way around. Everything is like converted. Yeah. Actually, uh, it depends on on the on my null hypothesis. So uh, that's why it's, it's necessary to define the null hypothesis. Okay. Uh, since you talked, just please tell us the null hypothesis of this example, because this is the other way around. This one, you must, you must have a p value of at least zero point zero five because I failed to reject you. Um, so the null hypothesis, uh, she will not get married. She failed to reject this one, so she would say yes. <laughs> exactly. So here the non hypothesis they are together, and she is failing to reject. 
So she is saying that the null hypothesis, they will stay together, they will not change, but, uh, and, and because of that, his B value is more than 5%. But mm. if, if he uh, someday got that B value of less than 5%, she will be able to reject the null hypothesis and she will take an alternative aspect. Okay. Okay. So we are always aiming to this rectangle here. We aim to reject, but sometimes we fail to reject. Okay. So our best aim is rejection of the null hypothesis. Okay. We can't aim to prove the alternative hypothesis because it's automatic. When we are able to reject the null hypothesis, it's automatic that the alternative hypothesis will be accepted. So, and we should remember that uh, every hypothesis has a very true and like very true uh, aspect in the reality and we don't know that and we have our own decision. So sometimes we take a decision and it's right and sometimes it's false. So uh, the type one error We'll, we'll talk about the uh, wrong decisions we take. Uh, we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis, which is being pregnant, which is actually not true. In the type two error, false negative, we actually say that we, uh, we, we are not able to reject the null hypothesis, so uh, that person is normal and that person doesn't have a baby, uh, while in fact, uh, no. the hypothesis is false. Okay, so the logic of statistical testing. For categorical data, if you remember, uh, we have these proportions that are taken from uh, the community, okay? All humans have these proportions for this variable. They have four categories and with these percentages. Okay, when I went to some kind of uh, patients, I don't know why they are special, and I observed these numbers. What does the statistical test do? He goes to the normal ratios and he takes an absolute number out of them according to the sample number I took. For example, I took a sample of 300 and their distribution was like this. He uh, takes that uh, 300 and multiplies it by these percentages and take these numbers. After that, he compares the expected frequencies if uh, we are normal and the observed frequencies and he compares them. If they are really uh, close to each other, then the probability is high, the B value is high, and we can't reject the null hypothesis. We can't reject. We, we can't reject the null hypothesis and we can drop any conclusion. But if it is the other way around, if they are really far from each other, that there are really uh, strong differences, then we can reject the null hypothesis and we say that our group is different from uh, other humans. How does that apply to continuous data? In continuous data, we usually have a mean, for example, the uh, height of our patients and you convert the height of our patients to the normal distribution of height in uh, humans. Okay, if it is inside the confidence interval, then it's normal. Or we have 95% of getting different uh, means inside that range. But if it is quite away from from our confidence interval and from our uh, mean from the normal distribution of our sample our uh, population then we can reject the null hypothesis and we uh, we accept the alternative hypothesis which is those patients are shorter or uh, longer than uh, our patients uh, than our population uh, I have a question. Yeah, please. Uh, about the last slide, please. Hmm. Okay, hello. Uh, I understand that when we are 
in the numbers bigger than two, we can reject. But why we can't we can reject when we are lower than minus two? Well, we also can reject because higher than two means those patients are uh, uh, higher. Okay. Okay, but and if I have another another categorical variable, so I can't reject in the minus two area, right? Um, okay, to tell you the truth, sometimes we have the two tail tests and sometimes we have one tail test. What does that mean? If there are two options, those patients can be either on both, um, on either side, then we can uh, take the two tail test. But if uh, we are just having one side that is probable, then we use the one uh, tail t test. Okay. So we do. So it depends on the test I'm using. On the data we have and the, on the variable. Sometimes well, we do not have shorter. We just have higher. It, it depends on the variable. Okay. 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 Can you give an example? Yeah, please. No, no, I, I'm asking you to give us a little example. Um, actually, for everything, for everything, uh, well, we can use them both, okay? For example, uh, quality of life for patients with cancer. Do you expect those uh, patients with cancer to have better quality of life than uh, the normal population? Uh, so you will have lower quality of course Worse. of course of course it's low quality of life so um we still can use the two uh, to the two sided t tests but well, we better use the one uh, one of the tails right for the so we're better. not using both at the same time uh but no, we, we need to select just one of the tests, okay? Okay. And th they are usually close to each other, okay? So the uh, B value there will give us in either or one, uh, in, in any of these estimations, it will be really close to each other. Okay. Okay, thank you. You are so welcome. Uh, so here we have the alternative hypothesis, the null hypothesis, the type 2 error, and the type 1 error. And he comes, he takes that alternative hypothesis mean and compare it to the null hypothesis mean and distribution. And we should always know, uh, remember actually, that this line is optional, okay? It's our choice to put it here or here or here because we don't know that point. If we know that point, it should be like quite easier for us, but we don't know that point. So we need to estimate and take our best assumption to put that line. And it's sometimes higher or lower than the uh, exact point. Okay. And, and this line represent the B value? Uh, we will talk. It can represent two things, okay? It can represent the mean which has the B value to the right of it, or that can represent the alpha error. So we will talk about it right now. Uh, we should always remember that type 1 error and type 2 error are not uh, that frequent, and that's why we need to give them smaller squares because they are like rare cases. Okay. We have that line, as I told you, it can be either one of two things. The f because uh, I'm, I'm not saying the same line will be either one of two things, but we have two lines. Uh, one line is our mean, our observations. And this line will define the p-value. What is the b-value? It is the um, rectangle, this, the uh, space uh, below 
the line of the non hypothesis and to the right of the line of the mean. Okay, this is the B value. You can see it here. Our observed point, we put a line perpendicular to our uh, axis and we take the space to the right, and this is the B value. What does it represent? This is the probability of having the null hypothesis true while we are standing here okay if you are standing here at the middle it will be one 100 percent we, we can have that uh, conclusion by chance but if i'm here it will be 10 percent if i'm standing here it will be one percent okay and we go on sometimes it's uh, one per thousand and that would be a very important uh, b value so do do we want the b value to be uh, higher or lower lower of course uh, actually the b value by definition is the probability or the chance of having the null hypothesis true while I am rejecting the null hypothesis, okay? So it's the chance of error, okay? So we need it to be really small. So I say that my B value is really small. So my um, probability of having that number by chance is really small. Okay. How small should it be? It should be lower than the critical value. And what is the critical value? If you remember, we defined something at the beginning of our uh, experiment. We define the confidence interval. It should be, usually it is 95%. And when I'm saying my confidence interval is 95%, then I am saying my alpha error is five percent i can't have them contradicting with each other they complete each other so i either choose one of these two uh, values and i compare my b value to the alpha error so if i have a, a b value of four percent then it is important and if it is two percent it is important but if it is 5.1 percent it is not important so I compare it to the critical value, which is the alpha error. Here we have the B value. Here we, you can see the two lines, okay? So this line we define before we start our study, and this line we observe after we conduct our study. Sometimes it is significant, and sometimes it is not. But wh why is it like this? Uh, if we need to understand this, I want you to um, see that experiment, okay? Uh, if I tell you that I have a box that is uh, usually 50-50 uh, between forks and spoons, okay? And I tell you that I, take, I took the first one and it is a spoon, okay? C can you say? that my uh, collection are all made of spoons no okay if i say that two or three are spoons can you say that my my, my uh, collection are not that accurate uh, they do not have I need not half out. of them spoons what do you think not took off all of them not full of them but do you think my uh, actually the null hypothesis my box is normal and they have the 50 forks and 50 spoons now you can't conclude anything right okay and yeah. if i if i put two more I, I'm, t I'm taking them randomly okay now there are five C can you say that it's less likely to have like five random spoons out of the box that includes 50 50. do you think my no five is so little to conclude out of 
so little, no. but okay. Uh, I will ask you more. Now, can you conclude anything? Do you think the probability of having seven spoons in order is really small? This no, seven I mean, it's really, really high. It's really high. So we have very high probability that my box is not made of spoons and forks. So this is the B value actually. This is how we make the B value. When I put one spoon, the B value is just 55 uh, 50 percent. Okay, I could have taken a fork if I add one. It's 25% and so on. It goes down, it goes down till we reach a value that says my B value is better than the alpha error, the 5%. And when we reach there, we can conclude that we have our hypothesis rejected, the null hypothesis rejected, and we accept the alternative hypothesis. So, see you in the next call. Keep your questions for the next goal. Um, hello, my friends. Okay, so uh, maybe I should have uh, stopped the uh, screen sharing for last uh, example. Please just tell me when a similar problem happens. Okay, so do you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Uh, I have a box. It should be 50% uh, spoons and 50% uh, forks. And uh, I'm taking randomly out of it. Okay, I took the first piece, it was a spoon. Can you conclude my box is damaged? It's not correctly distributed? I believe no, because the chance is 50%. Okay, now the chance is 25%. Okay, now the chance is 12%. Now, the chance, I believe, it's around seven or four percent. Now, with with five random spoons out of this box, uh, the chance is lower than five percent. Okay, this is mathematics. Okay, so if the chance is lower than five percent, I I I'm not. 100% sure this box is damaged, but um, uh, I have that idea that less uh, that will happen in less than 5% of the cases, okay? So it still can be right or correct, my box, but that the chance is less than 5%. Do you agree? Okay, anybody doesn't agree? No, that's right. Okay, so with, with each spoon, the B value is going down, 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 down. Okay, that's perfect. Now we understood how the B value is sometimes uh, important and sometimes it's not. Okay, but the problem is when I took the fourth B, it wasn't a spoon, it was a fork. Okay. Or, or let's say four and a fork. What, what, what can you say about this? Do you still have the same conclusion? Mm, not really. Okay, two things changed. The first thing is the probability of having four it's, it's, it's still the same, but when I put that fork, okay, the probability for it, okay, didn't change. It's 
the probability was 50-50 between fork and spoon. But when I added it here, the problem was I, I had 100% spoons here, okay? With a B value of, let's say, 12%, okay? 12.5%. But when I added this, okay? The probability stayed the same or whatever, or we can calculate it, but the problem is I had, before it, I had um, my distribution was 100% spoons. Now, it is 80% spoons, okay? So what did it change? Actually, the, the proportion, okay, the difference, here, the difference is 50%. If you remember, the normal percent, the, what, I should, what, what, should, uh, what should have happened was two forks and two spoons. Now, we have 100% spoons, and I should have gotten 50-50. Okay, so the, the difference between those two numbers is 50%. Okay, but now, The percentage is 80%. So the difference from 50-50 is 30%. Okay? I, I hope you understood this idea because like not just the B value will go down, but also the difference from what I'm expecting. I expected 50-50, but I got 100. So the difference is really high. Okay, that the B value should be really low, but it can be in another way. It can be not that low. It, the difference can be just 30% when I have one fork and four spoons. So the difference is not that high and the B value will go up with the next, uh, with the next uh, piece I, I took. Okay, so the B value doesn't always go in the same direction, lower and lower, okay? Sometimes I take uh, another sample and it goes back. Why? Because the, the uh, second sample wasn't similar to the first one, okay? Or wasn't following the same rules. And the first uh, sample, they were 100% spoons, and it's in the second one, when I added them, they were 80%. Okay, is that example clear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that can apply to continue with data, but uh, actually I don't want to, to confuse you more. Uh, for example, we can say that uh, a spoon weighs more than a fork, and when I'm taking more spoons, the weight, the mean weight, is a spoon. But when I'm taking a fork, the mean is going down, okay, right? Because the fork is lighter. So uh, that, that can be taken to continuous data, but I can't represent it now. But yeah, you can think about it, and uh, maybe somebody can uh, capture a video and send it to us uh, on the WhatsApp group. So I'll go back to uh, my presentation. Yeah, here. And we played the game of spoons. Okay, what have we missed till here? We are just talking about type one error. Okay, and suddenly type 2 error comes to us and he needs to talk about himself, okay? We need to think about it, don't you think so? Actually, the type 2 error is different, it's different from what you are thinking, okay? Um, there is a difference and I can't see any difference. And this is a problem also. And I'm sorry, I forgot to record. No, I'm recording. Okay, 
just please remind me when I'm not recording. You can see the sign uh, in the chat box. Okay, so there is a difference, and this box is really made of spoons, and I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, no, it's correct. Where is the where is that error? That error is a better error. The type two error it stands here. Okay, so you can see that it's not really important by itself, but the most important thing in here is the power. Okay, so what is the power? Power is one minus beta. One minus this box. What does that mean? What what where? is the power situated. It's situated where I can reject the null hypothesis while it is actually false. So I can define power in a different way. Uh, I'm accepting the alternative hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is actually true. Or I'm seeing the difference when there is difference. Okay, here in type two error, I'm not seeing the difference that is actually there. But power makes me feel the uh, difference that is there. Where, where is it in the continuous data? Here we have the B uh, error, the beta error, sorry. And here we have the power. If you can see that verbal uh, space, where is it situated? Is it situated in the uh, alternative hypothesis? And where I'm not confused, okay, when I'm sure this alternative hypothesis is true and it is in reality true. So the power is the probability of rejecting non hypothesis when it is actually false. What is the point of power? Okay, so it's a term and we have a, a formula to calculate it. But what is the main point of this uh, power? Actually, it defines the other distribution. If you remember the B value and uh, the alpha error, the confidence interval, we are still work working on that distribution or the normal distribution of the usual data of the normal population. But we didn't define that, the, that other um, distribution. So when I'm saying I'm standing here, my B value is 5%, I know where I'm standing in regard to this distribution, but I'm not saying where I'm standing regarding this distribution. So with Bauer, with that term, I can define myself regarding both of them. So what is the point of that? Okay, if I know, when I'm where I'm standing uh, in regard to that uh, distribution. What is the point of that? Actually, we do not just do experiments and see our B values if it is important or not. We need to expect, we need to see the future. We need to say, if I take that sample, I'll be high likely to get a B value if there is a difference, if there is actually a difference. If you, if you remember the definition of power, it is the same. I am saying I need to conduct a study to see the difference if there is difference. So I'm saying I need to conduct a powerful study. Okay, so the importance of power is to see to see the future. You can see here that person is telling here that uh, just anyone, like one minute, one hour, one second, I don't know, is enough to reject the null hypothesis and to accept her. But she is not understanding that. Okay? Sorry. Um, Brahim, I have. Uh... It's not like a question, it's actually um, uh, when you just uh, explain about the p-values, the confidence interval, I just uh, got this uh, idea, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's right to, to make it as an example. Can I like say it? Yeah, please, please say so, it. 
So, for example, um, in the place where I did my um, where I did my um, uh, clinical rotation, we had a whole section that um, the, the assistant person, also the the doctor said that we have a patient here with positive coronavirus, and we think that all patients in this section they have the uh, the, the virus. And the chef arts, you know, the 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 main doctor, yeah, he said no, uh, no one is uh, no one had this virus except this patient. So if we said like the no, the null hypothesis is that no no one is affected, no one is affected in this section with this virus, and we did a test. And the test said, like, uh, no, there's like um, a percentage of patients that they have this virus. How we can, as, how we can, like, uh, can we apply this example for this confidence interval for the normal hypothesis, rejecting it, accepting it? it? Can, okay. can it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, I understand your uh, example, mm -hmm. but actually, it is an example for uh, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. So I would mm -hmm. like just to just to delay it to the third call because uh, yeah. we, we need just to continue the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the that information about uh, the my prediction of yeah. sample size. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm sorry for that. Okay, uh, so. Um, th that person is predicting that that number n equals one is enough to uh, reject the null hypothesis, and uh, we need to go to the uh, game again. Uh, do you see my screen? Stop sharing. Okay. Now I don't have one box. I have two boxes. Okay, two boxes. For these two boxes, I know that they are the same. Okay. Uh, I put them, and I will show you. Uh, you. You need to tell me if they are actually the same or if they are not the same. Okay. Um, first of all. Uh, how many pieces out of the two boxes should I take? But please just expect or just guess. What, what do one you One from each. Okay, if I took one from this and one from this, and one is a spoon and one is a fork, okay? Uh, I should tell you that uh, those boxes are the same as uh, as last experiment. So, if I uh, take one from here and one from here, can you drop any conclusion? Can you see this is a fourth? Mm -hmm. can, can you drop any conclusion? No. Okay. Not yet. Do you need more? Yes, I think we need more. Mm -hmm. and know how many is there in each uh, box okay uh, uh, i'll be generous and i'll give you two more here and two more here okay give me a conclusion please maybe maybe till now the first one is for spoons and the second one is for forks but this is not certain because uh, we, we we're not done yet uh, okay, uh, if I add one more, will you be done? How many mm. in each? Okay, you ask a very important question. Okay, understanding the uh, total population in the boxes will give me a better estimation of the uh, sample size I should take. Okay, so uh I, I don't know the number okay i don't know but your question is really important because this plays a role in uh calculating uh, the sample size what what we are doing right now we are predicting we are predicting i'm telling you uh, is that enough so i'm i'm not saying that just for a question, uh, I'm saying that if I take three of the first population and three of the second population, what would that give me? 
a conclusion is that sample size enough to give a better uh, a good uh, b value if okay. i have like a hundred in each box no but if i have 10 yes okay so i understand you i understand you the uh, number of the total population is important okay what is also important um, they are, how they are dis distributed okay the variants um, you you asked a very important question now the difference is really high here we have three spawns and here three forks so the difference is six right because those are three in different direction from those but if i do that the difference will be really really high but if i do that the difference is lower right yeah so uh, we have a very a very important problem here uh, how do i expect actually here is better than that i took more more sample but um, wrong, wrong uh, conclusion or not wrong conclusion less accurate conclusion so uh, predicting the sample size say says that uh, i need the number that i have the lowest probability of uh, having this conclusion by chance okay i don't need that by chance i need to be like truly accurate or as accurate as i can be okay so i will give you a clue uh, my neighbor also got two boxes one green and one red and he told me that uh, he took all the pieces in the green one and they were spawns and all the ones in the uh, red one and they were forks okay w would that give you a better estimation of the sample size Actually, you we brought, we, question, please? Um, actually, we brought the boxes from the same place, from the same store. And he said, uh, the red box, the one on my right, uh, always had uh, spawns, and the green one on my left always had forks. Okay? He told me that, and we brought those from the same store. Would that have any implication on your uh, estimation of the sample size? Yes, of course. Because he knows he, he knows the samples. Yeah. Uh, well, what is the, the implication of that on our studies? Actually, uh, we usually when I conduct a study, I calculate the sample size, and when I calculate the sample size, I have that calculator. When I enter the calculator, it asks me several questions. First question. What is the total number of the population you have? Second question, what is the difference you expect between the, your two groups? Okay, uh, let me show you. Uh, another neighbor came to me and told me, no, uh, they are like 75% forks and 25% spawns in the left uh, group, and they are like this. Okay, now, do you need a higher sample size or lower uh, remember that those are not used higher. those yeah, are higher. the numbers yeah of course those are the higher. numbers we were told about by our neighbors okay but when i when, when i come to my study i expect the same i'm not sure but i expect the same if a, a study in uh, the us told me that rheumatoid arthritis patients have um, higher blood pressure. So I expect higher blood pressure too. So I'm not sure, but I always expect what they have concluded. So we knew now that the difference between the two groups means to us, okay? Means to us and affect our estimation of the uh, sample size, okay? Now I need to give you another hint, okay? Um, I'm telling you that your estimation is really good, but 
uh, your power is about 80 percent i need more power from you i need you to de to detect 90 percent of the difference if there is any if i need more power from you will you need more sample size or lower sample size more sample size to reduce the error exactly exactly higher sample size will reduce the error and we know that power equals one minus beta which is an error beta is an error so thank you so much for this example and saying thank you to my spoon yeah you have a lot of spoons yeah, for a single person, because I don't uh, yeah. do the dishes, so... Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm so surprised. <laughs> okay, do you see my screen now? Yes. Perfect. Yes. And now we should go... Actually, I'm really sorry. I think the statistical test will not fit in our uh, presentation today, but I hope you are having fun okay so let's just take a closer look on power and sample size what is power affected by by sample size when i have higher sample size i have higher power okay uh, variation in the outcome okay this variance higher power if you remember, if I have um, all forks in my left hand and all spoons in my right hand, this is low variance. But if I have some of those and some of those in each hand, the variance is high. So if I have, uh, yeah, if I have a higher variance, okay, I will have lower power. But if I have less variance, I will have higher power. Remember that variance means the distribution will be flat and meaning that um, More, being, uh, being flat right. will increase the errors. Exactly. More uh, uh, always remember better error when we are talking about uh, power. So here we have that. Okay, the difference to be detected. Remember that um, when we say that well, we have a group of 50-50 and we are taking them and the difference is really high. We have 100% spoons. The difference is high. The difference is 50%. This is a quite high difference. So if the difference is high, we have higher power, but the difference is uh, lower for example if the first box has uh, like 10 percent spawns and the second box has 20 percent okay the difference is just 10 percent okay not 50 percent so if the difference is lower the power will be lower okay uh, remember when we are taking these examples or these rules we are saying that when I have more difference, when I'm keeping everything else the same, so I'm keeping the sample size and everything else the same, I'm just changing the difference. So the difference will have a reverse effect on power. The significance level, alpha, which is the alpha error, okay? Uh, I want you to remember this. I have the alpha error here. Okay, so if I have more alpha error, if I have an alpha error till here, okay, what does that mean to power? Higher or lower? The same. Higher. The same. Uh, actually higher. Okay. Uh, to give you a clue, uh, everything here will be uh, well, will affect will affect the. Uh, well, where is the pen? I don't know. Oh, it's here. Uh, so, uh, usually we have the line here of alpha, and alpha is this. Okay? 
So if the line is here, then beta, beta is here, okay? If I move the line to here, okay? This is actually not a line, but if I move the line here, uh, the power will increase, okay? So power and alpha goes, go in the same direction, but beta goes in different direction. If beta goes down, Alpha and power goes up. Okay. Um, so if the mean difference is higher, the error is less, the, the power is more. Exactly. That's it. The triangle area here. Then every the, uh, high power. power mm -hmm. Yes, Masa? Then every high power holds uh, a higher chance of alpha error. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, if you are keeping everything else fixed, the same, okay. And we have another uh, thing that affect our uh, power, one tail and two tailed. What, what do you think? If we have a two tail test, the power will be more or less? Actually, well, when, when I'm confusing the test, two the power more. will be lower. But when it is on one tail, the power will be higher. Okay, and this is actually all can be dropped to these figures. And I will give you uh, a representation so you can read about that. So, sample size. What is the um, link between sample size and power? Okay, so uh, increase sample size. I will show you this. Yeah, here. A power is the ability to detect true evidence, but sample size, it can be either one of two things. Uh, our way to increase power, or it can be a calculation that, that we calculate prior to the study according to our power. So we either decide on the power and calculate the sample size, and this is the correct way. I usually do that. Uh, not, um, I, I mean, we usually all uh, do that, but uh, when I have a fixed sample size, for example, I just have 10 patients of rheumatoid arthritis, then my power will be defined. It, it, I can't calculate the power and aim for more patients, I just have those. Okay. We will go here. Um, sample size is affected by data. Uh, data is actually the significant difference between two groups. If I have two groups and I tell you uh, one group is uh, just uh, one gram per deciliter lower in sugar than the other group, is that significant to you? It might be and it might be not. And this mm, number not is, not divided, uh, is not defined by uh, a study. It's defined by a clinician. A clinician comes to me, no, I need 10. The difference is of 10 is important to me clinically, but uh, one um, is not important to me. So if, if the difference is smaller, I will, have, I will need to have higher sample size. Uh, the sigma or uh, sigma um, in some calculations we can take standard deviation from sigma so it represents variance similar to standard deviation similar to confidence interval so more variance means I need more sample size alpha error more errors I need more sample size uh, if I need more power, if you remember, I told you, uh, now you have the power of 80. I told you that you, you, you decided on the sample size, but unfortunately your power is 80. I need a power of 90 next study. So you told me, I will take more, more uh, samples, more pieces on these boxes. Equal and unequal arms. If I have a group of 50 and a group of 500, I will need more sample size because they're not equal, and so on. 
uh, this is the uh, formula for sample size, but nobody uses it anymore. Uh, we have uh, calculators and maybe we can um, practice them in the coming sessions and we talked about this. Now, is it important to uh, talk about sampling and power if I have the full population of participants. For example, uh, I'm doing an online workshop and I'm assessing the difference between uh, prior to the workshop and after the workshop. I don't have a sample, okay? So I don't need to calculate the power, okay? I, I'm collecting everybody. I, I don't need to, to think about everything because I know everything, okay? But Remember, if I'm going to talk about you as a representation of all workshops around the world, I will need to estimate, to, to consider that you are just a sample of uh, all people who are attending online workshops. Okay? The difference. It's really important that when I can make a better difference, a higher difference, that, that will reduce the sample size, reduce the funds I will need, and increase my power, reduce my B value. Uh, um, so it will make my paper stronger. And I should reduce the variability in, inside the groups. Okay, if I'm having those uh, flat distributions, I should like assess how can I make this these distributions tighter. Okay, how how can, how can we like um, make this study better? Because when when these let me do this when these distributions are tight, power is better uh errors are lower and so on so now we can we can see uh well actually i don't know uh i i need your help in uh, that decision uh if you think we should continue with the statistical tests in the third call we will do that or we will just keep it till next session the, the fifth session, and we just um, I, I have another call for questions and for uh, the example, the love seed. Uh, what, what do you think? Or you don't prefer to have another call at all? I think it's better to keep the statistical test for uh, the next test, next session. Okay. Do you agree? Please just put thumbs if you agree with Lena to delay this. Uh, uh, sorry, Ibrahim, uh, I was in the kitchen, oh, really? I drink water, so I, I didn't hear, uh, I just came and I hear you talking about my example, you, and I heard uh, Lina. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, no, no worry, Lila. Uh, okay, um, uh, anybody wants to continue with the statistical tests right now? Uh, I guess it's better if we learn more before Ramadan because we don't know how we are when we are going to have our um, sessions then. But actually it's not tight so we can like prolong our uh, month it can be two months i know any way uh, anyhow so maybe uh, anybody agrees with zara i think ramadan we can make it at, mid at midnight <laughs> <laughs> midnight Okay, uh, so uh, we'll take your opinion, uh, Lina. I'm sorry, Zara. So uh, the third session will be just for some questions and some examples. Uh, Lina, I was saying uh, uh, that we are going to discuss your example in the third group. And uh, okay. please, if you have questions, just collect them. And uh, we, we, we have the call in 10 minutes and it will not last for more than 15 minutes. Okay. See you then. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, in every example, we need to understand the uh, types of data we are collecting. 
here we have patients and we have diseased, not diseased. So we do not have a continuous scale. We do not have um, many points on the severity scale of that uh, disease. We just have diseased, not diseased. So we do not have that scale. We just have the two by two table. Uh, diseased, not diseased, and actually you just have one population, so you can just do a percentage. A percentage, okay. okay. But if, for example, if you had two uh, wards in your uh, hospital and you are comparing them, then you will have two lines, okay, ward one, ward two, uh, diseased, not diseased, so then you exactly. have two by two table, and for that table you can do a uh, chi square test and compare the two words and uh, so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's mm -hmm. clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. Great. Thank, thank you for you. the example. <laughs> thank you, Lila. Okay, uh, Masa? Um, I just want to ask about the parameters of p value. Parameters of like, P value. Uh, can, can you explain like, your question? Uh, um, like, uh, what really affects the p value and uh, directly and uh, indirectly? Okay. Um, and let's start from the very beginning. Uh, your sample size, when you decide on the sample size, does it affect the p value? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, your control group, does it affect your p-value? Uh, by, by the control, I am saying that uh, the yeah. other line in a chi-square test in a two-by-two two table or uh, the uh, population or the normal distribution of uh, humans uh, that you are comparing to or uh, the controls in your case control study Choosing that control will it affect your p value or not? Yes, it will affect it. Uh, can you, Masa, tell me just like one thing in your study that cannot affect a p value? I, I, I believe there is there one. Isn't. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So this is the same. Everything. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay. So, Everything so affect, but when, when uh, you show us mm, when you showed us uh, that uh, that slide uh, um, where uh, there you must be uh, you must be at least uh, five percent because I cannot uh, because I failed to reject you. D can you remember that that slide? Yes. Yes. Uh, it was uh, it was after the chicken one. <laughs> so um, why at least five percent? It should have it should have been uh, five percent uh, maximum. Okay. Uh, because it uh, it should be five percent or lower, isn't it? Okay. If it is five percent or lower, she could have rejected him. Okay. But she is saying, <laughs> I, am, I am failing to reject you. So, failing to reject means so I'm accepting. higher than 5%. Okay. Mm -hmm. Failing to reject is accepting. Accep oh, accepting the null. You are, you are all simil similar. Exactly. Ah, okay. Got uh, it. Uh, and uh, and null hypothesis in that example. Mm, we are talking. Oh, we are. Yeah. Mm, mm, okay, the null. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. You are so welcome. Uh, Zara, you had a question? Mm, yes. Can you can you please? I did. Um, when we are talking about the null hypothesis, um, it, it's not, it's a question if the way I'm thinking is right or wrong. So, um, 
the errors, okay, when I have type 1 error is when I reject the null hypoth hypothesis because uh, I have a result, but I shouldn't have a result, right? Exactly. And the type 2 is when I accept it, so I don't have a result, but I should have got results. Exactly. Okay. Uh, um, in, in an easier way, uh, type 1 error is seeing something that is not there, okay? H having, a, like, like a deciding on a difference that is not actually a difference. They are similar, the groups are similar. Type 2 error is the visit difference, as we saw. Uh, I put that ugly picture uh, for you to remind you. Potato. Ugly picture, exactly. Uh, to the visit difference, but I can see it. This is type 2 error. Uh, I want to ask you a question, uh, everybody. Uh, what is uh, more harmful, or what should I take care of more? Type 1 error or type 2 error, in your opinion? Type 2, because it's bigger than type 1. Uh, uh, the size changes, actually. Um, we no, see say type it, um, give us time. sometimes, sometimes, uh, sometimes type 1 error is smaller, but yes, actually you are right. Type 2 error is usually 20%. A type two, type one error is usually five percent. But does that make them more important? If I tell you twenty percent of type one and twenty percent of type two, what is uh, more important to you? Uh, shouldn't I think about the question? If it is a therapy question, then one type will be more important than the other. But if it is a harm study, then the other type might be more important. Um, uh, actually, you started right, but you ended it wrong. Uh, love, you were right. <laughs> type 1 error is always the most important. Why? Because even in a harmful study, type 1 error is, uh, is saying like, uh, I see a difference. Oh, okay, you are right, uh, sorry. Uh, type 1 error, I see a difference and I recommend a drug for the population, and I'm uh, causing some costs and I'm causing some side effects, while well, it is not actually uh, beneficial. But uh, you were actually correct, Zara. If I'm doing a harmful study, I'm not doing a harmful study, I'm uh, conducting a study that is actually an interventional study, but I found out that my intervention is harmful. This is very rare that my intervention ends up being harmful, but if that happens, type 1 error would be better to have than type 2 error, because I should prevent that uh, drug from being tested further, okay? And type 2 error, what, what is the side effect of having type 2 error, repeating the study or having a bigger study, okay? So you, you were right in, in both of parts of your uh, answer. Um, then, uh, then what is the limit? Uh, okay, uh, love, go, go yeah, on. Sorry. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> the answer is we should take care of uh, type 1 error more. Okay? Because usually we have interventional studies that we do not end up being harming the uh, population, okay? So type one error is more important and we should take care of it more. Okay, Alila, you had a question? Yeah, uh, I, would, I would like to ask, is it ha ha has to do with specificity and sensitivity? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, of course. So, but yeah. uh, I, I think I think um, we should we should uh, keep that for a, a sp uh, mm -hmm. special session for sensitivity and specificity because um, but we should think in in another way uh, for those terms. And actually, I uh, thought about doing them with likelihood ratio and uh, everything that relates to. Um, 
positive predictive value and negative predictive value yeah. and everything in uh, the diagnostic studies altogether. So if you don't mind, we might like delay that. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. yeah. Of course, I would just like to to make like some things clear to me. So uh, if I'm like, uh, uh, if you can, the uh, the next session, I also explain if I want to to discover a device that uh, that can discover a disease or something. I guess I guess sometimes in this this situation maybe the type two error will be maybe more important to me. Maybe yeah, like yeah, there's a different I guess in, in a study in uh, that relates to drugs and a study that relates to to, one, to a device maybe. Yeah. Yes, actually they are totally uh, different. Okay. Yeah. Uh, th thank you for your question, Lila. Can you ask uh, Ahmed? Oh yes, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm going back to the example of the forks and the spoons. So, mm -hmm. when you were calculating the probabilities, so like uh, one fork this is 50%, uh, two forks, 25, 34, and so on. Uh, so, yeah. this is, uh, I get that this is a probability of getting a spoon or a fork out of the box. So, how did you translate this into the B value, which is, uh, as far as I understand, the, the probability or false positive? How did you translate this into this? I didn't get that. Okay, uh, what is the b-value? Uh, the b-value is the probability of having uh, the error, okay? The false, uh, false positive, right? Okay, so uh, my error was defined by my first spoon, okay? Uh, next one should be a fork, right? according to the normal rule but uh, if i get the second one as a spoon that will be an error okay so I, I took the second one and it was a spoon okay what is the probability of having that effect that error uh, is that an error do you agree that this is an error or not uh taking in considering 50 50 chance yes Okay, so uh, yeah, well, that is what we are saying. We are saying B value is the probability of getting something by chance. Uh, I, I feel humiliated doing this, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the B value is the probability of getting some uh, thing by chance considering the null hypothesis is true. Okay, or assuming the null hypothesis is true. So, in my opinion, this is. False. This is an error. This is a type one error. This th there is an effect. I see an effect. I see spoons, but I shouldn't. And uh, the the probability of multiplying the probability of those. Uh, does that okay. answer your question? Yeah, it actually does. Thank you. You're so welcome. Okay, Masa, uh, uh, I would like uh, maybe Zarek. Uh, Oh, it's more dangerous. Ah, those are answers uh, in the chat room. Uh, Masa, you had a question. Yeah, uh, uh, I was wondering: uh, Is there any uh, uh, any safe power to reduce the alpha error? I mean, um, how can I know uh, my limit power? Ah, safe power. You you are talking about power, since, and I thought about alpha like power. Since alpha power. error is more dangerous. Mm. Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> since alpha error is the <laughs> is the more dangerous. Yeah. Uh, and actually, power needs alpha error. Uh, actually, we should see or estimate the balance between them both okay i can just reduce the alpha error till one percent while i'm having that error of uh, beta raising to 30 percent okay i should say the the least amount of power i should accept is 80 percent because lower than 80 percent that, that's not a study. If I'm if I, if I come to you and I tell you uh, I'm conducting a study with the probability of detecting an effect that is actually there is lower than uh, seventy percent. That, that's not a study. This is an experiment, a nonsense experiment. So 
what should we say? That 80% is the lowest um, um, acceptable uh, power. This is actually in general, but in some studies, we need more. Okay, if I uh, if I'm going to study a preventive intervention, uh, it should be higher. Okay, because I need I need to uh, uh, to prevent that disease or outcome or side effect. Okay, uh, uh, especially if that side effect or disease is really harmful. Okay, but uh, when I'm studying an interventional study, it is usually uh, eighty percent. In some uh, genome-wide association studies, and so uh, in some fields we have uh, special parameters. Okay, sometimes they accept uh, an alpha error of just one per thousand. Okay, yeah, can you expect that? It's like fifty times lower than the the thing we uh, expect in our studies. So uh, in general, we knew uh, the rules, but uh five percent for alpha value and twenty percent for beta error but uh, in special cases in special uh, fields we need to uh, ask the um, uh, experts there yeah, uh, yeah. okay do you have any other question uh, uh, actually just to raise, raise your hands one. if if you if you have any question uh, I, uh, Basil had one during the last call. He asked you to re-explain the one and two tailed whenever you can. Okay. Uh, I want, Basil, can you tell us more about your question? Because I don't understand uh, exactly what you mean by this. Basel, you are so shy. Yeah, yeah, please. Hi, hi, Brian. How are you? Hi, hi, Basel. Uh, I just like to type in the chat because I think it keeps the information in front of everyone. That's that's why uh, I don't chat as much. Uh, I think my question is um, regarding the one one tail and two tail. First of all, I don't know what are these exactly i don't know how do they relate to the power so okay you can explain please. okay i i'd like to tell you that i have i have that uh, okay i have those two uh, glasses of uh, spools and forks okay um the null hypothesis they are different the alternative hypothesis uh, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm making a mistake. The null hypothesis, yeah. they are similar, but the null hypothesis is they are different. But uh, do you know if that on my right is, has more spoons or that on my left has more spoons? I don't know. Okay, if I don't know, then I will do the two sided t tests, two sided chi square two-sided uh, visual exact test, whatever test I do, it will be that, uh, that two-sided, okay? Because I don't know, I might like find out that those are the forks here and those are the spoons here. And maybe the other way around, I don't know. But if I know that uh, forks tend to go to the right and I'm pretty sure that if there is a difference, the difference will be more forks on the right. I'm just testing that, okay? I know that there is zero chance that forks will go to the left, okay? I know that. If I know that for sure, then I will do a one-sided t-test. Does that answer your question? Okay, and how does the two-tailed uh, t-test help me? Uh, okay, uh, the the uh, two tail t tests, uh, for example, for age or for age or for um, yeah, let's let's say for age. Okay, I took a sample of uh, you. Okay, of uh, those people who are attending uh, online workshops, and I found out that uh, ages might be different from the general population. 
but I'm not quite sure if those ages are higher than uh, the normal distribution of ages and the people in my group are uh, older or uh, they are younger, okay? So the t-test is I bring the, uh, the normal distribution of ages of the general Syrian population and I come to my sample and I take a sample of my population. Sample of my population with a mean of a 20 percent, at 20 uh, years old. Okay, so 20 years old is here actually. Okay, but the test I did is a two sided t test because before doing the experiment, I didn't know anything about my population. Okay, so a two sided t test will give me a, a higher b value than a one-sided t-test. Why? Because one-sided t-test will give me higher power. Think uh, of the statistical test as a man who is just focusing. If he is focusing here on one side, uh, I think they are younger, then the statistical test will just work here and he will give me more power in here. Uh, giving me more power will give me lower b value. But when I'm confusing him, just go to the two tail, two tails t test, and work here and here. He will come. He will work. He will give me the same power, but divided on both uh, sides. So I will have a higher b value. Higher b value meaning that the statistical significance will be less likely. Okay, I got it now. Thank you. Okay, you are so welcome, Hassan. Uh, Oh, so what? it's like I'm specifying my null hypothesis when I'm using the one-tailed. It's exactly. more specific. Exactly. Ahmed, do you uh, have a question? Yeah. One use uh, one side uh, right the t test, one tail two test. So uh, it's like uh, on the base shape the curve. I'm taking only uh, one one side of outliers, right? Exactly. So, translate into uh, a b value of half the 0 0.05, like 0 0.025. Uh, exactly. The five percent will be on one side. We will uh, take the whole five percent on one side. Or yes. B. Okay. Um, I, I don't compare the b uh, unless to the full alpha error. Okay, so when I'm saying I'm uh, taking that bell shape and I'm saying that I'm doing a one-sided t-test, then um, this sentence means that um, I'm taking the alpha error and putting it all on one side and I'm comparing my b-value to that one side. Uh, so I took the whole 5% to one side. Exactly. Okay, so so if the five if the alpha is still the same, so how does uh, the power increase since the alpha is the same? Uh, alpha is the same, but beta is not the same because uh, because uh, power relates to beta. Okay, so when I uh, when I uh, put the two sided t test, it's actually really difficult to do it without slides or without pictures now. But uh, although alpha is the same, be beta will not be the same because the, the curve I'm conveying to will not won't be in the same situation. Okay, if you remember, I have my first my first. Uh, bell shape, my first population, my first distribution, and I have the uh, alpha error. Okay, and this is defined before my study. But the uh, bell shape that I found out after I conducted my study uh, is not fixed. Actually, it can change. And when I'm changing my test and changing it from being on two sides to one side. Uh, it's not fixed between beta and alpha. Okay, so beta will change. Uh, okay, I kind of imagined. Okay, mm -hmm. but Thank didn't you, we uh, say that 
uh, power is related to alpha? Yeah, when we are uh, doing an exactly the same test, okay, they are related yes. to each other when we are uh, just sticking to one side t test. But when we are saying we will change from between tests, we, we shouldn't stick to that rule. Okay. Okay, so uh, Aya, you have a question. Hello. Uh, I have a question about the confidence interval. Uh, you've said that the more wider the confidence interval, the, the less accurate the result is. Uh, when I'm, for example, calculating the odds ratio and the confidence interval is very wide, what the pro what's the problem here? Can I make the, the confidence interval narrower statistically or how can I deal with confidence interval? Yes, just to explain for everybody in that chat room, um, that video call, um, uh, odds ratio is an association measure, okay? So if I have that two by two, ta uh, two, by two um, table, so odds ratio is one of the calculations that we can conclude from, those, from that two by two table. Uh, that odds ratio, uh, does have a confidence interval because I'm not sure my uh, because I'm not sure my uh, a sample represent everybody actually it is a sample so it can be right and it can be wrong and it has a confidence interval so how I make the confidence interval tighter uh, it depends on my sample if I increase my sample it will be tighter and uh, if i for example uh, reduce the amount of random error for example uh, i'm assessing mortality in uh, my table so i do not just take like mortality in general i specify my mortality uh, by some kind of size that i can see after uh, the death okay rigidity or something like this so uh, i can i can mix mortality but i can't mix those specific signs or maybe this is a difficult uh, example uh, if i'm assessing better uh, if i'm saying uh, we will have better quality of life but to better quality of life we have several contributors okay if i say uh, better, better physical activity okay and I calculate physical activity by uh, like uh, accurate measures, for example, those steps, meters on uh, your phone, then this is really accurate. Being accurate, okay, in my uh, assessment will increase, uh, uh, will increase my precision and will reduce the variance. Reducing the variance meaning uh, reducing the, uh, width of the confidence interval. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You are welcome. Uh, Dr. Ibrahim, can I ask a question, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Dr. Safa, can, can, can you just please wait a minute because uh, Rami has a question. I'm really sorry, oh, sure, sure. because yeah. Uh, Rami, can you please ask your question? Yes, uh, how can we measure the sample size? Based on what exactly? Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember that uh, picture I showed you with uh, um, several things that contribute the one-sided, two-sided test? Uh, if my test is assessing uh, beneficence or uh, if it is assessing uh, um, uh, being equal or um, uh, my population, my total population, okay, um, the alpha error, all of those, uh, I should enter them to my calculator, and we have uh, like special calculators for each uh, design of our studies. And for those, uh, for those studies, for example, if you say uh, I'm going to do an RCT, they will ask you several questions. If you have equal groups, not equal groups, and so on. When you answer all these questions, you will get your answer. You will get. Uh, the answer they will say they will tell you you should have like 200 in that group and 200 in that group and by that 
you will have a higher chance to get a better, uh, a good B value for the numbers you entered. And remember, the most important number is, sorry, uh, the mean difference. Okay, they will ask you, uh, how big is the difference you are expecting between the two groups? If you say like 20% of my uh, scale, that will be really high and you, that will reduce your sample size to, to a very uh, low number. But if you say like 2%, that, then that will make your sample size thousands. Okay, is that a good okay, question? Nice. Yes, yes, thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, you are so welcome. Dr. Safa, can you please answer your question, uh, ask your question? Uh, yes, um, just with regards to type 1 and type 2 error, so we would consider a type 1 error as a false positive and a type 2 error as a false negative. So if I were to give you an example about testing for coronavirus, if I had tested someone and the test showed a false negative, wouldn't it be more detrimental than showing a false positive? Because if I tested someone and then it, the test showed me negative, but he actually has the coronavirus, that would be more, would be more dangerous than actually you know, testing the, a false positive. So in that way, wouldn't a type 2 error be more dangerous than a type 1? Uh, yes, actually, this is totally true. And uh, uh, as I told you, when, when we think about uh, diagnostic studies and diagnostic measures, uh, it's totally different. So, uh, for example, when we have a really contagious uh, disease, we need to rule in uh, everybody. We need to be really sensitive. Everybody that has a disease, uh, that might have the disease should enter uh, the hospital. So uh, our uh, cutoff should be really wide. And if you think about it, uh, we should be more sensitive. So we, we should include more uh, patients. And um, if we drop it to the uh, two uh, gas distributions, uh, but you, you, you are totally right, and uh, my, my uh, statement doesn't, doesn't, uh, has anything to do with your uh, rule, uh, doctor. Yeah, you are totally right. Uh, okay, so it, it depends on the uh, diagnostic studies and the disease we're talking about? That's uh, where it comes in play? Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. It does depend, and uh, what I said for interventional studies and uh, those studies that are uh, using like helpful drug, I uh, usually take care of the alpha error because most of, of the studies till now are interventional studies. And for those interventional studies, we need to take care not to uh, rule in or not to uh, approve any drug that is not actually helpful but in your case yes, it makes, yeah, makes sense right. actually because you don't want this drug to falsely say oh it works and then suddenly it it, it comes out that it doesn't work at all mm -hmm. that, yeah, that makes sense thank you really um, uh, terrible mm -hmm. and uh, there was um, a lot of examples in, in, in the world yes thank you so much yeah you are so welcome mm -hmm. So do, do we have any other question? So thank you so much for your uh, participation. And I really like this uh, question session better than everything I have uh, said before. Just, okay, so uh, see you in two days and uh, have a nice evening. Uh, goodbye.